In the meantime, I want to talk about two of Kobe's contemporaries posting their thoughts on Instagram last night. Here's Chris Paul. They lo the love you had for the game was nowhere near the love you had for your girls, all five of them. And Gigi, who we had already prearranged her marriage with little Chris, <laughs> is as beautiful and feisty as she could ever be. As I've watched you in retirement, as happy as you have ever been, I've sat back and prayed and hoped that my baby girl will look at me the way Gigi looks at you. I love you. I will miss you with all my heart, my brother. All love to Vanessa and all the families during this time. Carmelo Anthony also posting a Kobe tribute of his own saying, quote, there are moments in life when there are simply no words to describe the pain within. This is one of them. You will continue to be loved. You will be missed. You will be forever remembered. Your legacy will live on forever. Our friendship will not be forgotten. I know you will be near, even if I don't see you. Peace, King. There are no goodbyes. Wherever you'll be, you'll be in our hearts. Um, it is emotional to read that. I kind of can't believe that what is going to be ending up the first game the Lakers play will be LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony going against each other because the Blazers will be playing the Lakers on ESPN here on Friday night. Uh, I want to get back to Chris Paul just for one second. You saw Chris since mm -hmm. this happened. Yeah. How shaken is he? He was, uh, you know, our boys go to school together. So uh, I did some stuff for ESPN and I was running late. So they went to his house and I was waiting outside for him. And all of a sudden, like a black Range Rover comes out and it's staring at me. I'm like, who's this? And then he rolls down the window and it's Chris. And he's just teary eyed, man. You know, Chris is a very emotional, wears hard on the sleeve type guy, you know. So we had a moment and we discussed and we're just in disbelief, you know what I mean? And he said he took some extra time. Just He, he came home for his daughter's recital, mm -hmm. and he said that the accident happened right down the street from where the recital was, and he just was crushed. And uh, he took some extra time with the family, and I think he said he's going to meet his team in Sacramento either tonight or yes. tomorrow or something. So. Well, it's that urgent, Zach, you talked about it. You were on a plane when you heard about it, and you wanted the plane to turn around so you could go hug your daughter. Yeah, right? I'm, going, I'm going home tomorrow. I, I, can't, I can't wait to go home. It, it is disorienting. You know, I, was, I was talking to an agent just a couple of hours ago, and he was saying that you know, it was disorienting for him, too. He wanted to be with his kids. It's, it's, it's like you said, it's just strange how these things make you feel. Yeah. It's so personal. I know you immediately rushed to be with your kids, too. If you're a player, then you had to turn around and play in this game on Friday. Oh. If you are LeBron James with, as he said, all of this now on his shoulder, the personal just trauma of having a friend die. But I mean, also, yeah. by the way, Kobe and LeBron spoke twice in the 12 hours before Kobe died. Yeah. Um, but then also, as he says, I'm putting on my shoulders the responsibility for this team. How do you narrow your mind to go into basketball games? You know, I really don't know. A few years ago, uh, when I played in Washington, I lost my best friend and I got the call in the middle of the night. And I went out there and I played the first three minutes and I couldn't play. I mean, I literally really? told the coach, take me out, I couldn't play. It was, it was that hard. I mean, that's the feeling I have. Like was it if just I was because still, your brain couldn't focus I, in on I basketball? I couldn't focus on basketball because you understand there, there's more to, to life. life. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. there's more to life and I couldn't like focus on like back cuts or plays. I'm thinking about, I lost a brother, I lost my best friend, I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't process it, right. and I, I tried. And you know, you try to go out there and do things to get your mind off. But it, 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 in the moment, it was tough for me to handle, and I had to take some days off. Yeah, I mean, it's tough, and I think that you know, from a, from a far fan, see us and think, okay, you get paid a bunch of money you should be invincible, not knowing that we're humans just like everyone else. So we lose friends, we lose moms, we lose Kobe, we lose, Gigi, you know, we lose a lot of different people. And although we're going through these same battles and up and down emotions, we still have, we're paid to go out there and perform for two and a half hours, no matter what the circumstances are. Right. And it just shows that, you know, there's stuff that's bigger than basketball. And obviously life is more pressure than basketball. So, you know, hats off to everyone who's going out there and, and playing in his honor now. But, you know, like we mentioned, it, it's definitely got to be tough. I mean, when you're in the moment, you're in the moment, but the second a foul is called, the second you're subbed out the second the game stops you go right back to what is hurting the most and obviously that's what Kobe and Gigi left that void. Zach there was some surprise when the Lakers Clippers game that was scheduled for last night did get postponed just because it's happened so rarely in NBA history the Kennedy assassination stopped games and then there were a couple sporadic stops there was a brief stop for 9-11 there was a stop in one or two cities for very tragic events that happened there but it's extremely rare we're talking in the last 60 years do you get the impression that they could have played a game or that it was close or that it was just like this cannot happen I don't know ever how close it was but I defer to the to the players I mean if they don't want to play if the organizations aren't ready to play if the Lakers aren't ready then you just you know they, they're they are in the same city in theory you could 
rescheduled this game, although Staples Center is pretty booked up. Um, but you just, you just, some things come come second now, you know. Go borrow the forum, man. I mean, <laughs> it, it, yeah, there are other there are other ways there are other ways play. to do it. We see Rob Palenka there on the screen. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to hear from him today or not. Of course, remember Rob Palenka was Kobe Bryant's agent for two mm-hmm. decades, That's right? right. Well, he is the go- he was the godfather, I believe, of Gigi and at least maybe one of the other kids in that family. He is so close to them. And of course, we're seeing the players there as well. We've heard to a de- I don't know how to phrase this. Vanessa Bryant has updated her Instagram and I want to share that with you right now. The photo there is a picture of Kobe and his daughter. So we have not gotten official comments from her, but obviously it's unspeakable to think about what she must be yeah. feeling. I, can't even I know all of yeah. us up here have children. Yeah. The death of a child is something no parent should ever have to deal with. And then of course to lose her husband to, um, you know, Vanessa yeah. and, and just is. It's hard. I mean, you got to think, um, you know, Natalia being on her way to college. Yes. Uh, I mean, the two younger girls are never going to really get to know how amazing of a man their father was. You know, obviously Bianca being four and Capri being seven or eight months, yeah. you have you know, I have a one year old, so they kind of don't really have a grasp on life yet. So it's, they lost a father, you know, she lost a husband, you know, his mom and dad lost a son, his sisters lost a brother. Like it, it, it hits us hair heavy, but we can't imagine what it's doing to the actual family. So it's, you know, they stay in our prayers and our thoughts and um, we just wish them nothing but the best. It's the thing to always remember <clears throat> that these are real people with real mm-hmm. families. And, and in the end, we are all very sad to lose Kobe um, as a public figure and, and as a friend, but losing your father, your son, your brother, your husband like that, that is the tragedy.